So they should be able to hear okay. us soon. Keep in mind that unless you share it to Discord, uh, Rebecca won't be able to hear the music. I know she won't, but uh, she doesn't need to. She just needs to hear me say. I know she won't, but uh, sorry. Uh, there's going to be it. When I, after I say, I'm going to go do the intro. After I say, hi, I'm Mike Minotti, and I'm a Nintendo dog. You just need to say, hi, I'm Rebecca hi, Stone, I'm Rebecca and I am a Nintendo dog. I'm a Nintendo dog. Yeah, I watch it. I know. I All was right. hoping I would get to say it because I'm not truly a Nintendo dog, but I'm an honorary Nintendo I mean, you dog. could go rogue and say you're a Nintendo cat if you really want to. I could. I could. You could. I mean, I can't stop you. Hmm. All right. And ten dogs and cats was a thing. It was, in fact, a thing. I'm going to. I referenced uh, it in my uh, question for the week. Don't you worry. I'm going to tweet. It. We're Ooh, going good. live. Prepare your bodies. Good Lord, Mike. <laughs> Look, I don't know. It's Nintendo themed. <laughs> kind of. My body is ready. Well, <laughs> ready. Yeah, I was going to say ready. It's <laughs> close enough. Uh, he just had a lot of helium beef hammer. That's all it was. Okay. Finally replaced Jeff Grubb. <laughs> <laughs> retweet your tweet. And, Thank you. Okay. Just wait a little bit. We're almost ready. Let me get my the intro opened. I came up with so many ideas for the topic. I hope you're prepared. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah, that's right. I came up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I like it. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. She's going to make you look so bad. This is great. (laughs) I my my have one. It's real, real dumb. (laughs) It's one that will never happen. (laughs) So that's good. Okay, let's see. What do I? to put discord over here look at this see it's working oops i already probably messed something up there we go no, that's good oh that's make right. sure i actually put the scene on stream i will that's true okay. though i can't keep her on stream and read how does that work uh sean how will i read the threads okay from- so what you should do is you should pop out this um this channel's Oh, you, you I can, can do that, yeah. Yeah, if you if you click on Rec yeah. Room and then in the lower right hand corner you click the pop out, then like drag that to yes. like your second monitor. That will yes, thank you. Now I can use uh the other parts of Discord for the things I need. Open yep. up now. We're gonna get live in just a second here, everybody. Da, da, da. This is also uh smarter than the way Jeff does it, but uh he never listens to Christian when he yells at him. <laughs> Questions for last of the Nintendo. Make sure. Oh, yeah, did, did you decide how you're going to divvy everything up? Like, is why you're going to do super chats and whatnot? Or I'll just take care of all of it. You she's know, she's yeah. the guest. She has to read super chats. That's grunt. I work. don't know if she wanted to take something. I don't know. She, Usually split up. Yeah, that's grunt work. <laughs> she's too good for that. All right. Uh, Properties. Gotta make sure I have this on the right. <laughs> Window. There we go. There we go. This is easy. We got. We got this. It's all coming into place. Oh, look who's in the chat. <laughs> that dinner in Brooklyn. Wow. Is, uh, getting in the mood for the Mario movie reveal. He's whining and dining Chris Pratt as we speak. Mm-hmm. All right. My thing is, is she moving on my thing properly? Right now, it looks like she's like updating every two seconds but i don't know why that would be maybe when i actually go live that won't be an issue or start like transition her let me do it real quick let's see are you gonna make me look bad no no discord's doing that that's oh yeah she is frozen whoops well she's not frozen in discord <laughs> so that's, ju- look bad already. <laughs> that's just obs being funny i don't know why i'll figure out why it's doing that in a second can they hear me okay just a question. I think they can hear you, so that's good. Da, 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 da. 
Yeah, you're fine on the uh, audio side of things. Let's see, why is it doing that? Properties. What's your method automatic? Hello. Hi, Kristen. Welcome to the fire. Uh, we... Have you checked if she's not like minimized on your on your computer? Oh, like? that's I get it. Is that why? I see. That is exactly why Christian knew. Well, now how am I going to? Actually, we Christian. don't. Oh, right, right, right. This is okay. Yeah, Christian was absolutely right. That is why it is. <laughs> I feel stupid. Uh, okay. Uncharted Wolf, the uh, game club discussion will probably be going up on the channel tomorrow morning. I was trying to get Mike to uh, look at the preview for it on stream as free advertising, but no. I didn't see. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. All right. Wait a second. How am I going to read? How am I going to do all this other stuff? I have to do everything else on this left screen so I can keep her. No, I should do everything on the right screen except for her picture, which I should keep on the left screen so that it doesn't. I got it. I'm getting there. Take your time. First time. First podcast. Every podcast. That's the way we roll around here. That's what they say. Look, I have <laughs> actually my first time. I have a better excuse than Jeff. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, at Jeff, least Mike you, knows what a scene is. Yeah, Grub, you don't you don't get to say that. I'm sorry, not even joking. Jeff's trying to talk <laughs> shit about me. Yeah. Yes. You can even joke about that, bro. <laughs> what do you say? What is this amateur hour bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> wow! Wow! All right. I have my rundown open. Got to open up. Oh, last thing I got to open up, everybody, is just for the uh, super chats. We are almost there. We're almost there. People keep saying that I'm crazy, but I don't care. A little Princess and the Frog for you. Okay. I have officially have everything that I think I need. I like Street Fighter. Maybe I could. <laughs> can beat both? Oh, maybe. I don't know. I've, uh, maybe. Tim $10 says that you can beat them both as Street Fighter. Wow. All right. We're going to actually get started now. So you're not going to be able to hear the intro, Becca. But after you hear me say my thing, you oh, say. Oh, switch over. Switch over. Do we, do we both say, and we are the last of the Nintendo's at the same no, time? No, no. I'm sorry. That's just me. Darn. <laughs> you can do a uh, wolf, wolf, wolf if you want. Jeff sometimes does that. <laughs> He goes woof woof. Well, he does just woof behind me as I do that, so that's also a possibility. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I think we're actually ready. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Hey, you guys hear me? Start cheering now. Yeah, yeah, let's get this over with. <laughs> Woof woof! Hi, I'm Mike Minotti, and I am a Nintendo dog. Hi, I'm Rebecca Stone, and I am a Nintendo dog. And we are the last of the Nintendo dogs today. The Mario movie is threateningly close to showing a trailer. We're gonna talk about what we want from a new Splatfest, and I have finally, finally gotten rid of that pesky Jeff Grubb. Everybody. Please welcome the special guest for today, Rebecca Stone. How's it going, Rebecca? Hello, Wolf Wolf. I am super excited to be here. Oh my gosh, the Mario movie. We have to talk about what we think is it's going to be like. It's going to be insane. It's going to, I'm like terrified. I'm just terrified to say, but would, would you want to tell people a little bit about you, uh, uh, what, what, you, what you do? Because you, you, you have a show of your own that does some Nintendo stuff. Yes, I, um, yeah, so my name is Rebecca Stone, also known as Forrest Minish on social media platforms. I love video games, so I try to do as many different things about video games as I can. I do host a Nintendo uh, podcast called The Nintendo Shack. It is part of the PSVG uh, podcast network. I write for Twinfinite.net about video games. I do streaming. I stream on Twitch. I tweet. Things I tweet memes about video games. <laughs> so just anything that anybody who's willing to listen to me in some capacity talk about Nintendo. 
um, I try to do it. I got a whole bunch of people here who are forced to listen to you talk about Nintendo. So it's, it's well, going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be great. And that now, makes me excited. Yes. And yes, Jeff Grubb is not here this week. He is in uh, New York for the Giant Bombathon. I think they're going live tomorrow on, on Giant Bomb's Twitch. So that's going to be fun. They've been posting some fun looking pictures. I wish all of them a uh, good time. But uh, we're going to get going here because we do have to talk about the poster. And look at this. Look at everybody's like, oh, Jeff Grubb, we're going to miss Jeff Grubb. Does Jeff Grubb ever be ready to show you the poster live on video? Oh, sorry for the audio listeners. But look, there it is. It's right there, covering half of our faces each. Um, <laughs> well, it's okay. It's so beautiful. It, it should take up the whole screen. It it actually is a really good poster. I'm actually impressed. We I think we have to touch, talk about the elephant in the room, or actually, elephant's funny because it, it's about the lack of a trunk, actually. Uh, <laughs> Rebecca, I, I feel embarrassed to ask you this, but does Mario have a flat ass? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, man, that's just that's just disrespectful to Italians everywhere uh, yeah it's it's i don't know maybe it's the way that the sun is hitting it that makes it look flat i don't know is it oh just, my god it's just it's it's know. it's just the the the, the jeans and overalls are just too loose that's the problem here a little baggy he needs tighter oh. overalls <laughs> okay so uh ass problems <laughs> aside i this poster actually looks really great i go <laughs> on so good I go on all the time about how much I freaked out in Super Smash Bros. Melee because it was the first time there was like denim detail in Mario's clothes. And that is some very, very nice denim detail we've got right there on my boy. Uh, that's looking pretty good. Yeah, uh. yeah. The whole thing, it's just so its so colorful and vibrant. And uh, it isn't how I expected it to look. And I don't know if this is just how... The movie poster looks, or if I, this is probably the animation style, right? I yeah, this think. is gonna be what the movie looks like, and it's cool because it both looks very Mario, like the toads. Those are just toads, and I'm glad they didn't do anything super like weird with them. Like that looks like Mario. Uh, I assume like when we see his face, it's not like gonna be like surprise. He has a goatee or something. He's gonna just look like Mario. Mm -hmm. This really elaborate like setup for this town. These kind of floating Pandora area areas. That's interesting. Wasn't wasn't expecting that at all. Um, a few striking things. No Luigi. What are, are they hiding? Luigi is Luigi not as big a part of this movie as we thought. What's going on with Luigi? I think he's still gonna have a big part. Who's he being played by? Charlie Day. That's Charlie Day. Um, that's a pretty big part. I think he will be in it. I mean, we don't see a lot of the characters here. We don't see Peach. We don't see Bowser. But you know, I think. They wanted the focus to be on Mario and the Mushroom Kingdom. And that's what this does. And there's a surprising amount of detail. I was really scrolling in and looking at everything. There's a toad that's carrying a little cheap cheap and, you know, one of those you go to the carnival and you get a goldfish in a bag type things. Um, there's a lot of little things here that I thought was was cool to just see what they included. Yeah, you can see a drawing of a POW block. There is, yeah, just a ton of stuff. I like even the antique store has that kind of... 8-bit font to it mm -hmm. uh th this almost certainly is going to be like a mario is from the real world and gets trapped like sucked into the mushroom kingdom somehow kind of deal basically like the last mario so? movie i think so like look at that way he's posing there i don't know i still i for some reason i'm still expecting that vibe from it well because isn't somebody playing like his his boss or something so I think he's going to actually have like a boring plumber job, just like in the live oh, action really? Mario it's, movie. I didn't know that. Oh, Maybe no. I'm making that up. <laughs> Maybe I'm making that up. Uh, you might be right. Other other thing here. So that the, the toad with the red, is that just Toad Toad? Uh, is it Captain Toad? He's got the backpack stuff. I think it's Captain Toad because he doesn't have the light on, you know, the little yeah. light explorer thing or any of his equipment. But I think that's going to be the toad that... who. Keegan Michael Key. Yeah, yeah, that's that's gonna be Keegan Michael. Now, is he going <laughs> to? I think that's the toad that he's gonna be the red one. Is he? Yeah, I I think you're right. But is he going to just sound like Keegan, or is he gonna like do a toad voice? I think he's gonna do that. I, but I think it's gonna be like his own version of that. The, is his He'll own. He'll make it really good. He is a really good voice actor. All right, all right. I'll I'll have some faith in that here. What's uh? We'll stop covering our faces uh, with that now. But uh, man, I'm actually yeah, I'm actually into that poster. 
uh, more than I was expecting. I mean, it's the classic. It's funny how they're actually borrowing the video game trope of like the ba character's back looking at things. But I get it. That that actually is a pretty effective style. So I, I have no issues with that. But man, uh, Thursday, the trailer's dropping. And we, we were wondering like, oh, is it just going to be shown at New York Comic Con? Is it going to be behind closed doors? No, they're doing like a direct for it. It's getting its, its own direct. So we are all going to get to watch this trailer come out in just two days uh rebecca what are your what are your expectations what are you expecting to see from this so i the wording of it we're like a direct they're specifically calling this a direct to show the trailer and i'm wondering how long is this gonna be is it something where they're gonna show like a three or four minute trailer and that's it are they gonna show us a trailer that's like way entirely too long i mean they're calling it a teaser right so it can't be too long but are they going to be talking about, you know, other things in this direct that is not just the trailer? I found the word direct to be weird. I don't know. Well, maybe they're not maybe... just like a trailer premiere, but right. Maybe to direct. Yeah, it is weird that they're using that branding on it. Maybe because there's more than just the movie. Maybe they're going to also have, you remember how there's Street Fighter 2, the, the movie, the game? They were going to They said no game. They said no they game said no content. Game. Damn it. That's going to be such a funny way. joke, too. But Nintendo had to go and ruin it. Okay, so yeah, just literally. The movie trailer. It's got to be short then. Or is it going to have weird like interviews? Is, is Shiggy going to be like talking with the guy from oh. Illumination or Chris Pratt? Yeah, like, I was going to say there might be like a Chris Pratt interview. Like, and I was so excited to bring Mario to life with, with the voice. Right. No one's ever. You know. No one's ever brought Mario to life before. Right. Uh, yeah. It'll be some inspirational thing. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe uh, Miyamoto talking about something. It'd be like, when I was I five, I saw a Disney movie one time. And, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, one of those things. Uh, if they do something like that, do you think they would reference the the other Mario movie at all? Or, I th like, like, mention it or acknowledge it at all? I think Shiggy straight up actually hates that movie to a point where he <laughs> is still not ready to make jokes about it. I mean... Think about, like, Mega Man and how they would show ugly box art Mega Man and stuff. Ha ha ha. We've never gotten, like, a movie Mario. <laughs> like, granted, there's a likeness issue, but any reference to the Mario movie in anything, I think that is still very much a sore subject over at Nintendo. Yeah, I don't think they will either. My, my biggest nightmare is that somehow we don't hear the Chris Pratt voice, because I just, I need that Band-Aid ripped off right now. Uh, for oh better or for what worse. If they, what if they don't? What if the whole trailer goes by and, like, he just doesn't speak? It'd be a nightmare because then it would be like, well, I guess we got to wait. We have to have six more months of this discourse until we get the real trailer, like the full trailer. That would just be an absolute nightmare. You know what I, I think I could definitely see them doing is having him, like, not speak throughout the whole trailer and then, like, at the very end... Just like a one line thing, like it's a me, or like you know, just enough so that we get like a little taste of whatever Chris Pratt's voice is, but not an extended amount. That that is like, an that's excellent. It? Question. That's all we hear. <laughs> that is all we hear. At least, at least it's something. That's going to be a really funny. Oh, see, over under on Chris Pratt saying it's a me in the trailer, right? Like it's one hundred percent. It's got to be. If you get he says one thing, it's got to be. It is. I love dude to chat. It is me. I am Mario in the Chris <laughs> Pratt voice. That would just be the. I, I, I almost resent this poster for looking so good because I kind of like almost have been preparing myself to try not to get invested in this movie because I love Mario and it would be amazing if there was a good Mario movie. But I just don't know if it's going to be good. There's so many weird things that can happen with the celebrity voicing and, you know, the minion style humor. I didn't want to get excited in this poster. I'm like, oh, this looks cool. If this was actually a good movie, that would be awesome. Please actually be good. Now I have expectations. I know. I know. I, know. I was kind of going into it being like, OK, this is going to be something to and it still might be something to make fun of, come out with like a lot of jokes. Like, I don't know. I don't I don't want it to take itself too seriously, but I think it can still be good and honestly until just recently i didn't think that a video game movie could be that until the sonic movie and detective pikachu and i think if we can get mario in there as like the third really you know decent movie that'd be awesome it would be pretty embarrassing if it was like 
somehow like the Mario movie made less money or was received worse than Sonic the Hedgehog 2, right? Yeah, I know. What are we like going back to Mario versus Sonic? Like who's better, but movies this time instead of games. What's the crossover movie going to Is it going to be Super Smash Bros? Or is it going to be Sonic and Mario at the Olympic Games? Oh, my God. That would be funny. That's what <laughs> I that's, would go see that. I think that's actually kind of what I want. Uh, okay. let's. Uh, so kind of in this same uh, line here, Nintendo's actually launched an official website for Nintendo Pictures. And this is only in Japanese right now. There's not a whole lot to it, even when it's translated. Just the fact that this site exists is interesting. I, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that in front of uh, this movie, we're going to get like one of those montage logos we get all the time now, like Sony had it in front of Uncharted, uh, you know, like the Marvel thing, right? That's the classic where you like the logo is reflecting all these different pictures of movies. And we're going to get all these different Nintendo images showing up here. That's the site, but it also seems like indicate like, a dedication to do more movies just beyond Mario, right? Do you think they saw how the Mario movie was coming along and said, Oh no, we need to get our own movie studio so this doesn't happen again. <laughs> well, I still th- I still think like it's a production studio. So I still think they'll have partners. I bet they're I think they're still very I think that they're still on board with whatever Illumination is doing. I do too. Yeah. yeah. So, it's just uh, funny to think. It would be funny, yeah. right? That is good. Like, uh, oh, I no. think they're they're branching away from and I know they haven't, you know, been just video games, but I feel like they're branching out more and more like we see uh, they're doing like the theme parks, you know, they're they're dipping more into movies more recently. Um, and I think that's good for them. You know, they keep trying new things and different things. And I remember a couple of weeks ago, you guys talked about how they are kind of moving away from the mobile games. And I don't know. I think it's cool that they're trying more things. Yeah, especially with the Mario character. Like this is kind of the Mickey Mousing of of Mario, right, where he's not just most like a vegan character like maybe he had a cartoon once and you could buy toys of him this is mario as a full-on multimedia personality and sure he'll always mm-hmm. have that association with video games it's like mickey always had an association with cartoons but he's he's going to be something that you are just comfortable and expect to see uh absolutely everywhere uh, i was gonna say they want him to be everywhere like you know if you're at the movies you see mario if you're in the store you see mario you, you know everywhere mm-hmm. everywhere now, it's still funny when you actually think about it, because like Mickey Mouse is like, oh, it's a cartoon mouse. Like Mario is actually just like a middle aged Italian man, which as a middle aged Italian man myself, I'm a big fan of this now. Uh, but it, like when you actually stop and think about kids kicking of Mario, kicking it up of Mario, he's this like pudgy guy with a mustache. I love it. Yeah, I hey. work at an elementary school and kids still love Mar- like it's it's they they have backpacks of Mario like he's on their folders. Um, I think they're going to be really psyched about this movie. And like, if we think it's corny and like not what we wanted or expected, you have to remember that this isn't really for us. This is for all of those kids that are going to be so excited to see a Mario movie. You know, mm-hmm. they've played his game. Now they get to go see the movie. Do your students like the minions? Um, they, they do. I think they do. Yeah, I think so. They think they like Mario We'll see more. how many are. We'll see how many are minions for Halloween, but no, I don't see <laughs> minions as like pervasively as I see Mario and Minecraft and they're really into Pokemon cards. I always ask them if Those they're into still popular. like the games and no, they're not into the show. They're not into the games. They're into the cards. What, what, now, what, what grade do you teach? So I'm a school counselor at an elementary okay. school, K through four. Okay, so it's a bunch of different ones. Because, like, my I have nieces that are in second grade now, and they like the Pokemon cards uh, a lot. But I don't think they actually, like, play Pokemon no, cards. No, no, they don't play. And, like, when I was growing up, I was into Pokemon cards, and I never played the game either. I just collected them. And they like to see, you know, who has the best Charizard. Yeah. Like, oh, I have the holographic Charizard. I'm better than you. <laughs> this is a big sign that I'm actually was a big nerd even back then because I did play the game. So this is not a good <laughs> sign for me. I actually had, like, my decks and stuff. You uh, were probably one of the few kids then. Mm-hmm. What? Okay, so... There's going to at least be one more Nintendo movie after Mario. What is it going to be? What is the next one? Is it just Mario 2? Because like in the MCU, wasn't the second? I guess the second one was Hulk, actually, after Iron Man. But like Iron Man 2 was like the next one right away. They just went back to Iron Man first. Yeah, um, I was talking about this on my podcast last week. And I think all of the ones that I think would make really good movies 
they won't do because it needs to be something that is recognizable and would be like a blockbuster hit kind of thing. You're not going to get that with like Zelda or Metroid or even Animal Crossing. I don't think you would get something like that. Like, I don't know. I think it it, it would have to just be another Mario universe. Universe, Donkey thing. Kong. The problem with Zelda is that that like Mario, you can be silly. You could take some liberties. Yeah. Zelda it has wouldn't to be a casual hit like Mario would yeah. be. Zelda has to be actually be a fantasy epic. And I remember after Lord of the Rings came out, it was this big hit and everybody else tried making fantasy epics. And we had stuff like the Golden Compass and those Narnia movies. And just like, you know, some of them did OK. Most of them did not. It's really hard to make fantasy mm-hmm. epics. So uh, I, I do think they'll try Zelda at some point because it's Zelda. It's just it's like, you know, Mario, Zelda, Nintendo. That's what you think of. I do think you're right that we'll probably get like the Donkey Kong spinoff is maybe uh, the most likely. Hopefully Kirby. Kirby would be so good. Uh, Kirby would be good. I think, like I said, like it has to be something that's going to appeal to a really large amount of people to be, I think, blockbuster movie worthy. Otherwise, they might go the route of like a Netflix type thing. Yeah. Where, you know, it's not going to be this huge theatrical release. Um, They could play it a little safer. So you're saying it's going to be a Star Tropics movie for sure. Of course. <laughs> All right, good. I'm happy. I was worried there for a little bit. This is a really small thing here that just tickles my fancy, but Sonic Frontiers, which is uh, also like coming out relatively. Somebody had like a, a they tweeted a picture like it was like a 32 over the game or something. And I thought that was like a Metacritic score. It's like, what did reviews <laughs> drop? Like, no, that's how many days away we were from the release. My mistake. Uh, but th- this is a neat little thing. If you are a member of like the Sonic newsletter, you get uh, access to Sonic Frontiers DLC. That is just the shoes that Sonic wore from Sonic Adventure 2. And those were the shoes with like the like ha- like the half moon like hole in it for his grinding, like the really grind focused shoes. And I feel like I kind of need those shoes. Do you have to already be part of the newsletter or can you sign up now? Man, I hope I can sign up now because I am not a part of the newsletter right now. I bet you can sign up whenever and they'll give you that code. That, that's the big thing. Everybody loves the newsletters. I don't know. I don't know if newsletters are actually making money or if it's like that time everybody pivoted to video on Facebook and like because they thought that was making money and actually yeah, it isn't. Yeah. Everybody seems to think that newsletters make money right now. I have no idea if it's true. I think it's that they make money. I think that it's a very easy way to spread the word about your news. You know, it's in your email. You're checking your email all the time. For a lot of people, it pops up right on their phone. If they're getting the newsletter, they're kind of forced to see it if it's in their inbox every week. Um, so I think it's more of a marketing thing than, uh, than anything else. I'm being called a fake Sonic fan because I'm not subscribed to the newsletter. And honestly, fair. Honestly, yeah. Oh, but I was going to say Pokemon does that with the newsletters where they'll put out like an exclusive Pokemon that you can redeem, but you already had to have been subscribed to the newsletter to get it. And sometimes you don't even get like, I've always been subscribed and sometimes I just like, don't get the newsletter. It's like not even in my spam box or anything. And it's like a giant mess. So it's a tragedy. Not usually a fan of that, but hopefully, uh, hopefully Sega won't mess that up. So that's going to do for the news topics here. Uh, Hey, thanks to everybody who is watching live, by the way. Please do hit that thumbs up button if you can. We appreciate that. We've got some super chats already. We are going to read all those by the end of the show. Don't worry. So keep uh, sending those in. We will get to them. Uh, First, though, I want to get to the questions from our Discord community. Uh, So are you ready for this, Rebecca? You you know our listeners love to like give us nicknames, so I'm, I'm kind of interested to see what we've what they've come up with for you here. Oh, <laughs> Doctor Suss says, "Hey, Mike, finally talking to a girl, Minotti. <laughs> Jesus Christ!" And Rebecca, how does Jeff stand this guy's stone? Wow, they came for me hard. Uh, oh, Mike, enough with the penis talk of the last few weeks. We have a guest. Here's a real question: Which Nintendo characters were tidy whities great? Man, Dr. Suss, this just went so hard right away. Wait, what was what was the question? The actual question <laughs> is which characters wear tidy whities slash slash granny panties? Uh I mean Wario absolutely wears tidy whities, right? Yeah, they're absolutely. Like, they're, they're, they're stained, I'll just yes. say it. They're gross. They're gross. Who's the granny panties wearer, though? That's kind of interesting. I have to be honest. This is a thought that has never crossed my mind. Um, <laughs> that is a good question. Definitely Wario. 
Wario for sure in the the whitey tighties. I mean, I'm I'm a, maybe I'm a bit of a peach hater. I could see her wearing granny panties. I could just straight up see peach and granny panties. I think Daisy more than Peach. No way. Daisy's got like, no, Daisy has like really comfortable. Now I'm talking about Daisy's underwear and feeling comfortable, but look, they <laughs> asked. No, Daisy's got like something like sensible, but like still like kind of sexy, but not like obnoxious. No. Somebody like, said to- Toad wears like a diaper. Yes. It's Toad, like Toad definitely Toad a diaper type actually thing. wears a diaper that we can all see. So yeah. Pauline, absolutely not. <laughs> no, 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 no. Absolutely not Pauline. Uh, oh, Rosalina, well, Rosalina Commando. That's a big surprise for everybody. But, <laughs> yeah, actually, that's actually the truth. Um. Oh my God. Who else? I think. You know what? I think we gave this question more more uh, seriousness than it deserves. So I'm ready to move on. <laughs> okay. Ben, Benji Glasky says, "Hey, booger eating turds, man! I thought that people were gonna put on some kid gloves. Good for you guys, I guess. Hey, booger eating turds. We have seen Mega Man take his helmet off. Can we?" Can he take the rest off? Does Dr. Light need investigated? I mean, he's a robot. He's not actually, actually, when he is just rock, he is wearing clothes. Um, I guess I is clothes. Really? So, yeah, like in, in, uh, you, you, there's some, sh there's some things we can see him as actually like, just like, because Mega Man's whole story is that Dr. Light created him slash rock and roll eh, uh, as his like, is his lab assistants. So normally, Rock is actually just like looks like a boy with a shirt and like shorts on. Now that is the problem: is did Doctor Light actually spend a lot of time making a not <laughs> anatomically correct like little boy and girl? <laughs> yes, that's problematic. Actually, Benji Glass, that's a good point. I don't know. I again have not thought about this either. Your um, How your strange. audience has a lot better questions <laughs> than better, I expected. Is better the word? Uh, Jayton says, "How's it going, Mike and not Jeff?" By the power bestowed on me by the Ten Dogs, I have been granted special permission for two questions this episode. This is true. I missed his uh, a question last time, so I told him he could ask two. Uh, first question is for Mike. If Mario and Sonic characters collaborated on a non-Olympic themed game, what would it be? Ooh, ooh, this is this is good. What would okay? So Sonic and Mario crossover game. Actually, I think it would. I think that they should. Take Mario Party, and they should remember that Sonic Shuffle existed and give us that party game, Mario Shuffle, and nobody will like it. But uh, it's uh, its existence will amuse me. Oh, <laughs> and here's a question for you, Rebecca. Intel okay. 64 or GameCube? 64. Wow. Easily. Oh, my. Yeah. Easily? Yeah. You, I mean... You know, you know, I'm like Mr. GameCube these days. It's like practically my identity. I don't dislike GameCube. I don't know. I think, I don't know. I would pick 64. Uh, what do you, Ocarina do you, of Time. Pokemon uh, Snap. Beetle Adventure Racing. Beetle Adventure Racing. Do you like uh, Ocarina oh, yeah. Majora's more than um, Wind Waker and Twilight Princess? Definitely more than Twilight Princess. I really like Wind Waker, but I think as a whole, I do like the 64 Zelda more. I like Wind Waker HD a lot. Well, sure. I hope MVG is not listening because he he loves to to troll me and everyone in general I do, I, about how I much. I like GameCube. Okay, that's fine. As long as he still put respect on GameCube's name. Uh, Beef Hammer, Happy Tuesday. Mike refuses to co-host any more gaming podcasts with his brother Minotti. He's gonna be here Thursday, okay? And Rebecca hopefully won't have to donate her hair by the end of the episode. Stone. Yeah, I have all these guest hosts with amazing hair, and I'm just sitting here. <laughs> Guest hosts or regular hosts, all these people. Uh, what had more money invested into it? Stadia, with the studios paying tens of millions for ports and now refunding everything, or Nintendo's online infrastructure? Uh, definitely Stadia. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah, like there was that report that yeah, they paid. Without a doubt. They paid tens of millions of dollars for ports, for like a port of Red Dead Redemption 2. Like that, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 might have cost more than Nintendo's infrastructure for Nintendo Switch Online. Nintendo infrastructure is like three hamsters on a wheel that they feed every couple days. Oh, my God. I, I absolutely believe it. I mean, it's funny to put it like that. But yeah, absolutely. Stadia. Doc Seven's Gamer Games. Hello, Mike. I don't need Jeff to do a stinking podcast. Minotti and uh, first name was excited to be on a podcast with the Jeff Grubb. Only showed up because Mike didn't say Jeff was going to be gone. Last name, I guess he didn't know it was you. <laughs> Sony seems to envy Nintendo's ability to sell first party games. In my opinion, the major difference is that in large part, Nintendo's IP 
have been built up for 20 to 35 plus years. Well, Sony largely forgets IP or uh, in a hot locked car every concluding generation and a half. With the exception of Ratchet and Clank and Gran Turismo, I only somewhat count God of War because of the soft reboot. Jeff, success, Jeff suggested that The Last of Us and Horizon Zero Dawn remasters were born from, well, gotta do something, and seemingly a total amnesia for anything earlier than late PlayStation 3 era. Would Sony games sell better if they were attached to long-running, recognizable IPs? I absolutely think that there is a ton of value in like having these kind of forever IPs. It is really hard to keep that going. Like, you know, we talk about the PlayStation era. What if we just kept Resistance going forever and we were on Resistance 8 now or something? I mean, could that could that really be a thing? Could the, Was Resistance really going to have enough gas in the tank for that? Uh, now, like, there, there are certainly some where I can't believe we haven't tried Jack and Daxter again or Sly Cooper. Or, oh, I love Sly. Right. Even so, even like Ape, PlayStation 1, Ape Escape. Like, I, why isn't there a new Ape Escape or something like that? Um, especially when 3D platformers are having this resurgence. I really wish that they were doing uh, more than that. Now, I think Sony is thinking this now, and it's why they are trying so hard to make like God of War and Last of Us, and, and a lot of these newer things, they're they're trying to position them as, like, these kind of big franchises that are probably going to be around for a while. I know God of War is, like, its current storyline is stopping after Ragnarok, but there will be more God of War. Um, so, yeah, it, I think they understand, but I also think they don't have any kind of love for some of these older ones, or they kind of moved on from those, and it's, it's a point where... I don't know if we're not going back soon. We're going back to Twisted Metal. I guess we'll see. I don't know, Rebecca, are there any, like, Sony franchises that you really wish they would bring back that have been dead for a while? Or you think, like, they should have brought back just business-wise? I mean, my favorite that is long abandoned is Sly Cooper. And um, that one ended on a cliffhanger, by the way. So I think they could bring it back. But no, and I think Nintendo does this, too. It's it's not like Nintendo has kept all of their franchises alive. Everybody clamors for, you know, the F-Zero to come back. Like, there's so many that it's Nintendo has long forgotten over the years. Um, and I think, like Nintendo, Sony doesn't want to put out a game for a franchise if they don't have a fresh new idea for it. Because like you said, you know, how many times can they do, you know, the same concept over and over? Um, I don't think it would sell if, you know, they were just putting out the same, you know, the same type of thing without any fresh new ideas. They did it with, um, with Ratchet and Clank. They had a fresh new idea for it. And I think that did really well for them. Um, so I think they see more value in, giving more love to the franchises that are doing well now. It's just a different approach, I think. Winnie says, Hello, Mike, the last Nintendo standing Minotti, and Rebecca Grubslayer. <laughs> Will Tears of the Kingdom release in the launch window of Horizons VR game? I sure hope so. It would just be funny. When is that point. supposed to be? What, Horizons yeah. VR game? Yeah. I don't know. They showed it, and I always kind of, <laughs> I always kind of, like, uh, like, stop paying attention. I always kind of daze out. It's a VR Horizon thing. I don't know what you're actually mm -hmm. doing it. I think you look at the giant things walk by. Uh, it's like the one like new first party thing they talk about with PlayStation VR too. So, but yes, wherever there's a Horizon, there will be some. I don't know if it'll be Tears of the Kingdom, but there will be some kind of a bigger deal happening at the same time that will overshadow it. It's that it's that franchise's curse. Yeah. <laughs> Sesame Oil says hello, beef and cheddar boys. I'll add and girl. Happy October. <laughs> Did you know gaming recently published a discovery on Retro Studios never made the production project of a strategy RPG set in Hyrule? Do you think a strategy RPG set in Hyrule would work? Or do you think this is another wacky idea, just like the rumored Star Fox Grand Prix? I actually watched a little bit of this video. Becca, I don't know if you saw it, but no, basically, I didn't. yeah, so, you know, retro, uh, retro games, which which had like some other proposals that never gone anywhere proposed a strategy rpg kind of inspired by fantasy tactics but set in hyrule and it, it didn't get greenlit it is kind of an interesting idea though to just see that sort of tactics ogre or fantasy tactics idea just used with zelda and i think it'd be a good way to actually do a zelda game with that link have it be something really about like the sheikah and the gerudo and like the hillian knights and, and so on like that make tell like an even more kind of traditional chivalry night story. Uh, I think it actually makes more sense than, say, a Star Fox Grand Prix. I don't know, would that be a game you'd be interested in? 
I don't think I would be interested in that specifically because I'm not too into strategy type games, but I would be very excited just to see it happen in general because I love, especially for Zelda, but in, you know, any, I guess, franchise where they go out of, I guess, the comfort zone of whatever genre it is and do little spinoffs in other types of genre. Like for Zelda, we got a rhythm game out of Cadence of Hyrule. We got a, you know, hack and slash out of... Hyrule Warriors. So I like when they do stuff like that. I totally would have been excited to see a strategy game come out of uh, come out of that. I thought when Hy- how, when Cadence of Hyrule came out that we were going to get so many more of these fun spinoffs and that didn't really happen. That was kind of a bummer. It still might. I hope so. Uh, the Unbuttered uh, Gooch says, Dear Mike and Mystery Guest Host. That's an interesting name. Uh, what is your favorite theme for a Nintendo console in handheld? I always have a soft spot for this Majora's Mask themed 3DS. I love that Majora's. That was like the new 3DS XL, I think, because that was my last. I think that's still like the 3DS I use if I still use a 3DS is that awesome Majora's Mask one. Um, Because there was like an NES Game Boy Advance SP or something like. Yeah, there was a Game Boy Advance SP that looked like an NES. And that was a very handsome handheld console. Uh, Rebecca, any come to mind for you? Yeah, uh, I didn't ever have any of these, but the Majora's Mask 3DS does come to mind. Uh, the The Galaxy 3DS comes to mind. That mm. one's beautiful. And the Game Boy Advance SP that was gold with the Triforce on it. I love yes. that one. There's always good Zelda ones. They always they always did a good job with that. Diogo R.P. says, Hello, Mike, Resident Dog, Minotti, and Rebecca. Guest cat, but already asserting territorial dominance over the Resident Dog Stone. Yes. What's- <laughs> what's the one nintendo series that is due to jump to the mainstream with a new title on the switch or its successor in a way that fire emblem or WarioWare recently did i love the rhythm heaven games especially fever for the wii which is one of my all-time favorites and i couldn't help but think that with the success of fun rhythm games like trombone champ they could outgrow their niche status i mean i don't know if i would say WarioWare did i don't think that last one sold no i think that i think that kind of came and went very quickly yeah fire Emblem, though like i definitely understand the question because i mean luigi's mansion is probably actually my favorite example from this generation luigi's mansion was this kind of cute thing and then luigi's mansion 3 came along and actually sold over 10 million copies uh so so that's ridiculous so yeah what's like the next like nintendo's franchise that is sort of like mid-tier but then got big i wonder if if they did arms 2 if that actually couldn't catch on a lot more this time around like Maybe expand it more, have some kind of a, a fun single player mode. Uh, like th- 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 that was a good idea. And I think it worked as an early switch like launch window game. But I think you could do more with that one. It don't yell at me for calling this mid tier, but in 2022, it's probably considered mid tier. But it's time for them to bring back Star Fox in yeah. a new, fresh way. Well, OK, how would you do that? Because they've tried with Star Fox so many I times. Know. I know. Um, Man, I don't know. I feel like I've thought about this. And, you know, Nintendo has a very good way of delivering things that we didn't even know we wanted. Yeah. (laughs) Like coming up with an idea that's just so out of left field that it's like, oh, yeah, maybe that would actually work out. But I think, you know, when people think of Star Fox, they do think of the, you know, Star Star Fox 64. And I think a lot of what that game was worked really well so i i do think it needs to be somewhat reminiscent of that but maybe bigger better all around i don't know and not not so tight as some kind of weird gimmick like like zero is and i'm a zero defender yeah. i defend star fox zero but i get it why people yeah. are a giant fan although rhythm heaven also isn't a bad one diego i'd love to see rhythm heaven make it big hosp says hey yo non grub dogs now that we are in october it's time for spooky games what are you planning on playing this month Finally kicked off Resident Evil Revelations and looking to finish Cult of the Lamb. I have some I have some plans for spooky months. So first off, the Game Mess Game Club is going to be playing Alan Wake together. Uh, I'm going to play the remastered version. I wanted to buy it yesterday. Like all everything Epic was down yesterday. Like Fortnite was down and the Epic Game Store was down. So today, though, I will buy that and uh, maybe even tomorrow start that. But I also want to play Eternal Darkness on my original GameCube hardware. It streamed that. That'll be fun. That's a game that I actually liked when I played it back in the day, but never beat. I just recently uh, like like beat Vino Beautiful Joe, which was a similar thing. It was this GameCube game that I liked, but just didn't beat back then. And it's, it feels really satisfying when you beat those games. So I want to 
I want to be able to do the same with Eternal Darkness finally. And then I want to try to play through some Resident Evil games, at least Resident Evil 1 remake, uh, maybe Resident Evil 2. Uh, the I haven't beaten many Resident Evil games. I've played like a bunch of them, but I've only beaten 4, 5, and 8. So especially some of these earlier ones in their remakes, I want to go back to. Uh, how about you, Rebecca? What, what spooky stuff are you going to be up to? You know, I recently did start Eternal Darkness for the first time, uh, and that game's really creepy. I definitely, I didn't finish it, so I want to go back and try to finish it a little bit closer to the end of the month. And, um, don't yell at me, but I have never played Luigi's Mansion 3 before, Uh... but I am borrowing a copy from somebody, and I... I have only ever heard really good things about that yeah, game. I'm not people mad have yelled at, at me to play that game. <laughs> I'm not mad at you. I'm actually just excited. That game absolutely <laughs> rules. I couldn't believe how much I liked it. It's it's probably the it's it's a lot of ways the best looking Switch game. The animation work on it is just ridiculous. Next level games is, dare yeah, I say, next level when it comes yeah, to yeah, like yeah. presentation and stuff like that. Oh, and by the way, Mike, um, they're telling you that you missed uh, Velocity Prime's question. I never miss questions. That's never happened before in my life. Anyways, the next question here is from Velocity Prime. Good Tuesday to Mike and whoever else is there right now. Is Tears of the Kingdom the most anticipated game Nintendo has ever made? Direct sequel to the best-selling and most critically revered entry in Nintendo's prestige franchise. Definitely feels like it has pent-up demand, even if we haven't got a full hype trailer yet man it, it, it's too bad because you used to actually be able to measure these things back when people pre-ordered video games right uh, yeah. like, we used to actually know how much people anticipated a game i think that this is a distinct possibility though tears of the kingdom might be if if not the most anticipated game nintendo's ever like worked on it's got to be one of them <laughs> i think logically that makes sense and i'm very excited for tears of the kingdom i don't think it quite comes close to Breath of the Wild itself, though, because we, at least with Tears of the Kingdom, like, we've played Breath of the Wild. We might not totally know what to expect, but I think we have, like, a baseline of what to expect, and I think a lot of people are very excited for it, don't get me wrong, but I don't know. There was, like, an energy leading up to Breath of the Wild, not just because of that game, but because the Switch, brand new console, brand new, like, you know, concept of this open world, like, what the heck, Link looks different, what is going on? And it um, had that think... really good hype trailer. Like, that it, that, really that's the best trailer, video game yes. trailer ever. Yes, 100%. Um, so, I don't know. I think it, it would be very hard to pass that. But I think as we get closer, we'll start feeling it more and more. 1UP versus CPU says, Since we have a Force Minish on the pod, Rebecca, please send a message to Jeff Grubb and tell him why he needs to play Minish Cap ASAP. He seems to think that Has Capcom Zeldas aren't real Zeldas. Thanks. He, he doesn't really think that, but he also hasn't played the Oracle games. He has not. And I mean, look, I, it's, it's let it, me guess. He's played Link's Awakening, but he hasn't played the Oracle games. It's worse. Link's Awakening is his favorite video game. It's like number one. It's his favorite video game. And he has not played the Oracle games. The Oracles are the same thing, but better. <laughs> <laughs> look, I have never had the courage to tell that to him. But I will like, tell him. You may Wait, not be wrong. Somebody needs to tell him. There's, there's I'll no, tell him. There, there, he, I think he's always going to be weird about the Oracle games because they're so similar to his favorite game of all time, but like a little different. And it's not going to feel the same. With Minish Cap, like, I think that's not going to be a problem. He should just actually love Minish Cap. The only thing he won't like about Minish Cap is the slow start, which was a problem with every Zelda game back then. Mm, it's not yeah. terrible here. It's, it's a little bit. It's a little bit of a thing in Minish Cap, but a I little. also I, not like you know, you have like, you know, that that's your domain Minish Cap, but I also really like Minish Cap a lot. It has some of my favorite power-ups. Maybe it has my favorite dungeon boss in any Zelda game with those like two flying stingray things in the Sky Temple. Oh my god, yeah. yeah. With they, Rock's they, cape. They're yeah, oh, Rock's Cape is so good. Uh, I'm yeah. a. That's gosh. <gasps> okay, I'll tell Jeff to do that. You tell Jeff to do that. We have to bully him into doing this. Finally, I would. I think I would pay like money for them to bring Vadi back. It is out of game. I remember oh, how. So good. I remember how mad I was when uh, Sky Sword was coming out, and they had that guy that looked like Vadi, and I thought it was maybe mm-hmm. Vadi, and then it was just some like jobber, nobody, new guy uh weirdo and i was upset uh screaming madden says hey nintendo and nintendo guests with the mario movie game direct on october 6th what are the chances miyamoto says something like this chris pratt's voice as mario is so cool he makes me proud to call mario my son i think he's going to 
actually hear like the voiceover for you know the english translation voiceover yeah. for him say those exact words and i don't like that wouldn't it be better if he somehow said it in perfect english <laughs> like he rehearsed it <laughs> 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 oh god <laughs> there you go yeah but yes he's definitely gonna say that absolutely okay low rule this is interesting it says buy rent uh sell video game chickens cuckoos is that how you say the cuckoos you know the zelda ones yeah C- cuckoos? I, yeah uh, i don't know cuckoos chocobos and torch chicks uh rebecca has the guest i'll let you go first but you have to buy one rent one and sell them the cut goes from Zelda, the chocobos from Final Fantasy, and the Torchics from Pokemon. So buy is I get to keep forever, rent is I get to keep for a short time. And sell is and you're giving is- away. You don't want to see it again. Okay, I will I will sell the Chocobo because I don't I don't play that. You know, yeah, clearly with your pronunciation, I could tell you don't play a lot of Final I don't Fantasy. Know what that is, Final Fantasy. <laughs> um I am going to um Rent the cuckoos from Zelda because they'll probably escape anyway. They're always escaping That's true. the pens. And I'm going to buy Torchic because I want a Pokemon. I think I'm actually going to buy a Chocobo because I, unlike some heathens, love Final Fantasy. And I mean, the, they are cute. <laughs> they're cute and they're basically horses. So you can ride them places. Okay. Uh, so it's, if I'm not going to buy the Torchic, then I don't need to rent it because, like, why would I have a Pokemon for a little bit? So I'll rent the Cuckoo because then at least I can, like, jump off my house and s- glide safely to the ground with it. And that'll be fun. And then I'll just rent the Torchic. Oh, it's a bummer because I actually do like Torchic a lot. That's actually one of my favorite Pokemon starters ever. That's a good little boy. Betch JC says, sound the alarm. The Mario movie trailer is upon us with the world ending a short time after October 6th at 1.05 p.m., what will you do in the short amount of time this world exists for? I mean, I guess I'm just going to watch the Mario movie uh, trailer on repeat, right? Like, what else is there to do? And just cry knowing that I'll never get to see the final thing as I watch, like, the mushroom cloud approach. And I'll just go, no, it's it's uh, not me. And then I disappear forever. How about you, Rebecca? Me at work. Um, probably dealing with some children i should find a group of mario fans you know kids and like bring them into my office and like (laughs) just blow their minds because i guarantee you they don't even know that there's going to be like a trailer premiere that day and like just be like guys you are the first ones to see this i do wonder at what point like my nephews and nieces are gonna like know when games are getting announced and like understand where to find this news uh and whatnot without me just like telling them about things Because, I mean, I was, like, getting, like, Nintendo Power and other magazines relatively young. Like, I had some idea what was happening. So, I wonder when that happens for them. You probably see it on, like, YouTube and stuff. All the kids use YouTube already. Like They do see some things on YouTube and on TikTok. Uh, Mm -hmm. Lossian says, hello, Mike, Mustard Cheated, Minotti. And Rebecca already has more credibility with Xbox Killer because she is not Grubstone. I really wish that Xbox Killer came here today and was, like, really disappointed Jeff's not here. I haven't checked... I haven't really been able to see chat lately, but I hope he's popped up. Uh, what is wrong with Jim Ryan slash PlayStation? The trend Sony is following is heading the wrong direction. Mal Morales for $70. You got Expand uh, Loan Game and Spider-Man Remastered. Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut. Expansion plus improvements for $30 on upgrade. Last of Us Part 1, a full $70 for less content. What the only okay f- scenario for Remastered Zero Dawn? New content plus improvements for $20 to $30. So, like... As indignant as I kind of am about the Zero Dawn thing, I, we still don't really know what it is. I still want to see the actual announcement of it. I want to see, like, like the Sony post explaining. And I want to see, like, what do they expect us to pay for? Because it is, if it is just, yeah, we, like, improve some textures and animation in a five-year-old game, pay $70 for it, and there's going to be some new multiplayer mode, I guess, uh, that's going to be free to play anyways, probably, outside of the game. You'll get like a battle pass or something for it. It could be bad if it is just, hey, we made these improvements and you can spend 20 bucks for it or you cannot if you don't care. Maybe that's fine. I just don't know. Uh, I am worried about uh, knowing Sony. It's hard to imagine they don't try to find a way to turn it into a $70 package. Rebecca, we talked about this a little bit. I don't know if you had uh, too many thoughts about what what's what PlayStation is doing or about these kind of relatively recent remastering trend we've been seeing or remaking. Yeah. 
I, I don't have like in-depth thoughts on it, but I know that they spend a lot of money to make sure that whatever they do makes a lot of money. And so they're doing <laughs> this because true. they know people will buy it. I think that's I think that's true. Gerber says, hi, I'm reading a book about swear words, and it seems that in the late 1200s, Simon Futbutter, Jealous, and Henry Fuckbegger, not Jealous, were legitimate names people had. My question, what Nintendo character has the name most likely to become a swear word by the 2800s? And will the Wind Waker slash Twilight Princess double pack have been released by then? No to the last point. That's never coming out now, despite me personally. What Nintendo character has the name most likely to become a swear word by the 2800? What's the name of that disgusting new Pokemon that everybody but me likes? The one that's a Diglett? A Wiggler? Wiglet. <laughs> yeah, Wiglet will be a swear. Wiglet! Actually, maybe already a swear word. Um, Waluigi. Waluigi was so, a swear would be good. I think that's right. Start saying, I, don't know. I think that's right. Ogda says, hey there, Mike. Already drunk on power, Minotti and Rebecca. What have I done to deserve this stone? Don't know if this has been asked, but what is the one thing you would change to turn the Wii U's misfortune around? Change the name, port more second and third party entries in existence franchises. Uh... I haven't had more Super Mario Maker. Oh, I would have had Super Mario Maker be a launch game. Love the mess. P.S. Very happy with the aftermath of the Columbo AI drawing. So to honor Mike's love above Columbo in Disney, I give you this work of art. Oh, no. I'm going to. What is? Oh, my God. OK, OK. I'm going to save this. I'm going to get this on. I'm going to get this on the thing very soon here. Oh, that's incredible. You're all going to see it's this. Definitely the name. The name is a big problem for the Wii U. Yeah, if I could only have changed one thing for some reason it would have been the name that was that was i mean even just the reveal in general because remember they refused to show the actual box for some reason when they did the reveal uh and i had no way too many people thought that it was just a tablet for your wii right everybody thought it was like yeah everybody thought it was a new controller uh and that was a giant 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 problem uh but that's the big thing i don't i don't know though there were so many things like that's the big one there were so many problems. I don't know if one single thing could have ever uh, uh, saved the day there, sadly. And it is too bad. Uh, I still want to get this picture up. So uh, well, I'll read the next question and see if I can get you going. This I'm going to get this picture up. Mr. Boar says, as we wait on the edge of our seats with bated breath for the Mario movie trailer, has there ever been a trailer for a video game that was announced in advance that you looked forward to? Has there ever been a trailer for a video game that was announced in advance? Uh, like, just looking forward to a trailer? Oh, sure. Especially, like... Uh, like Kingdom Hearts 3 got revealed with the teaser C of teaser trailers. So I was just hoping to see actual trailers of it forever before it finally happened. Uh, I don't know if you have uh, anything you're thinking of for this one, Rebecca. Oh, man, I, would, I don't know. I would have to think about it. I don't even know which ones have been announced ahead of time before they actually showed it. But anything... Anything Zelda, anything Pokemon, anything that like we I'm, just would have had no idea what it was before. I mean, I guess like it. right now I'm still looking forward to like the really big uh, Tears of the Kingdom trailer, right? Like, yeah, because we still don't know what it is. Yeah, like really. I, right. Like I, I used to think like, oh, this is going to be like a, you know, basically the the Breath of the Wild map, but like with some new things. And now it's like, well, it's got to be more than that. It can't just be that anymore. That will, like this game has been in development longer than any Zelda game. I actually have very high expectations now. Mm-hmm. But yeah, exactly. I don't know what exactly I am expecting. So that's why I want to try to show me. Keywork says, don't know what the story is going to be. Right. What's up, boys? Question. Could Nintendo's next Mario game actually be a tie into the film? I don't know. Food for thought. I don't think so. Uh, like, I was thinking, like, are they going to do something like that Ratchet and Clank uh, game that was a tie into the movie? And then the movie bombed, but they people liked the game. Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, as somebody who actually kind of likes Street Fighter 2, the movie, the game, I would be a fan of it if they did, but I don't think they're going to. I don't think so either. I don't think there will be a tie-in, but I think they would be silly to not use the the opportunity for cross marketing at the very least. I do think that we will get a new Mario game next year, whether it's 2d or 3d. And I, I think that um, they'll use the Mario movie to help promote the game and vice versa. All right, here we go. Here's, the, here's, here's Columbo kissing uh, a Disney princess <laughs> from Dolly. Uh, this is the AI <laughs> world that we have now. Yep. 
Oh my gosh. Some of these look what pretty is that? good. Like Alice in Wonderland in the bottom corner. I think Maybe. I think that's uh, it's like Cinderella mixed with Alice. It's weird because he because he just said a Disney princess and not a specific one. It's like a weird right. amalgamation of all of them. There's like a bit of Aurora. I, I'm seeing Ariel in some of them. Uh, yes, that is many, many different princesses all in one. And uh, I, I don't think I like it, uh, but I am intrigued by it. So thank you, Octo. Uh, incredible work. Well, I mean, the incredible work by the AI that you tasked with this. But as it's human overlord, you did a good job. Uh, Vision 49 says, hey, Nintendo dogs and Nintendo cats, 2D platformers or 3D platformers, which do you prefer and why? I think I am actually on team 3D platformers, especially when it's like just Mario. As I get in trouble for this. I will take just about any 3D Mario game over any of the 2D ones. And I like a lot of the 2D ones a lot. 3D Mario platformers are is like the best. Those are just the best games uh, in, in a lot of cases. So I think I'm team 3D platformers. How about, how about you, Rebecca? I think I am too. Um, in general, platformers are one of my least favorite genre. Ooh, interesting. I didn't what? grow up with them, so I'm bad at them. That's fair. Did you like? Do you did you like Mario Odyssey? I did. Yeah, okay. that was my first 3D Mario game. Wow! <laughs> oh my god, that's like one of my favorite games ever. Uncharted Wolf says, "Hey J Jeff, wh where is he? Did X Bot Killer get him?" Oh well, hey Mike and Rebecca. With the impending release of Tears of the Kingdom, I had a sudden realization: I have never been excited for a Zelda game. I play and love them when they come out. But through every Zelda release I've lived through, I've never once felt the excitement for them. Have there been any games you know you'll play and love it, but I've never once been excited for? I mean, even as I get older, just like that old, like back when I was a kid, I would get too excited or even like a teenager. Like, like your, your body was just built differently. Like I was able to like reach levels of bizarre hype, almost unhealthy. I don't really get excited like that anymore. Plus, like the job is weird. Like, even Mario Odyssey uh, or something I'm looking forward to, right? I can't wait to play it. But because I don't have, like, a date to mark on the calendar, it's just someday I get an email in the middle of work, like, here's your code. I'm like, oh, yes, I have to put that in my Switch now and, and I guess play that. And sometimes I won't even, like, start it that day. It just feels weird getting, like, like getting games like that for some reason. It doesn't quite... Um, getting an email isn't quite as hype or exciting as like back in the day when Going we went to, to those the store and the midnight releases, <sighs> the and... midnight release. I miss those so much. We used to go to those GameStop midnight releases and they were so much fun. Even like I would go even when I didn't care for the game, like back when they were doing the big Call of Duty ones, like, eh, like whatever. Sure. I'll play a little bit of Call of Duty, but it was so, still yeah, just so much a, fun um, at a midnight release. I think that was the last midnight release that I have been to. Which one? Uh, for Mario Odyssey. Oh, for Mario Odyssey. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah that makes sense. Uh, yeah. now I'm like, now I'm, I'm feeling wistful. No, I know. I think you're right, though. Like, I thought, like, oh my gosh, am I like not as excited about games anymore? But I think you're right. There is like some bit to getting older. When I was like, when I was a kid awaiting Twilight Princess's release, I like kept putting up the date. Like, I would tape it to my wall. Then it would get delayed. I would cross it off and like write the new day. I would print out pictures, like screenshot stills from the trailer mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. was released online, and just like stick them to my wall. Like, I was so hyped, and like I'm still super hyped for Tears of the Kingdom. But like, you're right. I don't. I don't know. It's it, different. I was because like back then, time seemed to move so glacially slow that it was mm. like, oh, it's never going to be here. And now even with yeah. these games that are delayed forever, I'm like, yeah, like I'll blink and Tears of the Kingdom will be out. <laughs> like I'm going to play. And it I soon. feel like also also back then I didn't have as many games to play. Like right. I was maybe playing like the same one game until Twilight Princess came out. Like I need to beat 300 games before Tears of the Kingdom comes out. It's right. different. I have like a I have a backlog of games I want to play. I have a bunch of games I'd like to play again. I have all these live mm -hmm. service games that I enjoy to play. So, yeah, it's like the, the hype just isn't quite what it once was. Uh, Next one here is from Major Faison. My dog is barking. Penny, hey, what, what what's your favorite Mario game? 2D or 3D? Not. Oh, you don't care. I thought so. Hi, Mike. Please don't embarrass me in front of the guests, Minotti and Rebecca. Definitely not Jeff Grubb Stone. My question is simple yet thought provoking. Why would they remove Mario's ass for the movie? I beat him to this one. And can we bully them into a redesign like the Sonic movie? Thank you. I, no, 
we can't because uh, like the only thing that would have stopped them is a bad dislike ratio on YouTube, and they got rid of that. I often wonder if like they made that move before the first Sonic trailer came out, if that movie would have like gotten the new Sonic model, <laughs> if it would have just come out and oh. bombed. Um, oh. No, I think we're just stuck with Mario's flat ass forever, and it's a damn shame. But we'll persevere we together. We haven't seen it animated yet. You don't know. It could, it <laughs> Maybe, could have are you some, saying it's going to have it like... It could have some animation to it. It's going to jiggle physics. It's going to have jiggle physics. Oh, my God. I, God, when I... I had to go there. Like, I've been playing like some like games from the 2000s again and just being reminded of jiggle physics existence has just been something. <laughs> uh, G-Man, sir. Hello, Mike. I wet the bed again. Miss Naughty and Rebecca. I can beat Mike at arm wrestling stone. Wow. What's a level setting you want the Mario platformers to include more of? I want to see more Mario factory levels. They almost never show up like a like a Mar like a level theme in general. I do like factory themed things. That is correct. Uh. I also like Tropical Island themed things, but there's been a lot of Mario Tropical Island levels. I mean, we've had a whole game based around that. Man, I don't want to just steal yours, but Factory is like the right, right level. Even in uh, Kingdom Hearts 3, when you went to Monsters, Inc., and like Monsters, Inc. is just a factory. I was like, I love the way this looks. I, I love this industrial feeling to this place. So, man, I can't get anything but Factory out of my mind now. Sorry, G-Man, sir. I'm just globbing onto yours. Uh, Re Rebecca, is there like a level kind of theme or, or biome as the kids say these days that you would like to see in Mario? Uh, I don't know. I'm not as well versed in all the Mario levels and whatnot. Um, I tend to, for a lot of other things, like foresty kind of levels. Like, oh. I don't know if you knew my name, Forest Menish, but um, like very naturey, woodsy type of things. Like in, um, what was the one in Mario Odyssey? Where the Wooded Kingdom. Yeah, what was it? What, what was it called? I think just I think it was actually called the Wooded Kingdom, and it had like oh, that. It had, it had a different name. Did it? Dang it! Yeah. But it was the yeah. I know which one you mean though. And it steam, was like, the Steam Gardens. No, that's not its name. It's something like that. But yes, it was good. I bet Chat's saying it right now. If I can go look over there, it's but. Steam Gardens. Is it? No, it's not. You're making that. That's a good name. It's, but... I'm closer than you are. What? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I thought it was the Wooded Kingdom. <laughs> I feel like it's the Wooded uh, Kingdom. The chat say it, what it is yet? I'm looking. Some somebody said yes, that's it, but not to which of us. <laughs> Come on, chat, help me out here. It's Steam Gardens. No way. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> no, someone's saying Wooded Gardens. Is it both? Is <laughs> no. that is that why we got they're confused? Ma they're, they're making fun of you by saying Wooded Gardens. We're both right. No, see, it's we both win. You work with children. It's the You're used to this. Kingdom. Oh, and Steam Gardens is. The oh place my gosh! It. Look at that. We are both right. It is the Wood <laughs> Kingdom, and Steam Gardens is the name of the place with it. Wow. Okay. 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 Well, that is confusing. So mystery solved there. Yes. All right. Thank you, uh -huh. everybody. We are all heroes. Turbo Sean says, "Happy Tuesday, Mike." Currently under investigation for the disappearance of Jeff Grubb and Naughty and Rebecca, officially making this last of the Nintendo Plus cats. Shout outs to Frisk Stone. Jeff Grubb is dead. I can't believe Mike finally did it, and all it took was showing Jeff the Mario movie trailer early, finishing what Pratt started back in last year's September Direct. Now that Rebecca is our totally permanent new guest, <laughs> our co-host, and Jeff definitely won't be rising from the dead Undertaker-style next week, I thought we'd get to know her better with the usual game mess icebreakers. Mike, be a good host, and wait between questions, please, yes. He was going to ask 64 GameCube, but uh, he, he noticed that Jayden already uh, stole that one. So next, two, how do you feel about Crystal... From Star Fox. Are you, I mean, do you even know about Crystal from Star Fox? I, mean, I know who Crystal's from Star Fox is, but the only two Star Fox games I've played are Super and um, 64. Okay, well, so you're so you're safe is what you're saying. Yeah. You have it. Okay, well, but you've seen her. You know what Crystal's about. How, how does Crystal make you feel? Just say Isn't disgusted. She She's a blue furry. She wears like a battle bikini. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's fine. I don't know. Yeah, I see the disgust in your face. I know you're on my side on this. <laughs> okay. <Good. laughs> uh, number three, how do you feel about Super Metroid in 2022? Okay, so that's a good question because Super Metroid was my favorite Metroid game for a very long time. And I said, this game is perfect. The only thing that could make it better is a better map. And then I played Metroid Dread. <laughs> and there's a lot about Super Metroid that could be better. And I love, I love, I love Super Metroid. Don't get me wrong, but mm -hmm. I, 
I I wanted to wait to decide which of the two would be my favorite Metroid game because as soon as you play a game, it's like you know the honeymoon yeah. period. It's so good, but it's been it's been exactly a year, and I I think Metroid Dread is the best Metroid game. I may I'll, I'll maybe play Super Metroid again soon. I I love Super Metroid a lot, and I understand. It's really good. It's, it's really, really good. Really good game and design. I, and yeah. I definitely agree that Metroid Dread is probably the best controlling like 2d game ever it feels so good yes uh so but i don't know it just doesn't bother me in super metroid but maybe it will if i play it again we'll see we'll see uh it's a, good game. it's a very good jimmy nintendo says hi both welcome to show rebecca my question is about pokemon red and blue it feels like the franchise is only growing bigger but none of the new entries have been able to eclipse the original sales numbers 31.38 million per statista why do you think that is i didn't even realize that i mean pokemon red and blue were getting like national news coverage like the original pokemon phenomenon that was a very big thing and i was like there for that at like i was 12 i was the right wage the right age for it like pokemon has managed to stay popular forever and there are times where if you remember the craze around pokemon go for that one summer it was kind of like that but for just the basically the trifecta of the original games (laughs) the anime first season and the original pokemon cards it was nuts it was like a whole Mm -hmm. thing so I don't know if it'll ever maybe do better than that, but uh, it's it's always going to do very well. And that's fine enough. I think, yeah, it, I, I don't think it'll ever do better, but it's continuously doing better than most other franchises. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that's it for those questions from the Discord. We're going to take a short break. And then when we come back, we are going to uh, talk about the community question for the week, talking about our own ideas for a Splatfest. And we're going to read the Super Chat, talk about some games we've been playing. We'll be right back, everybody. This is when I take my bathroom break. Okay. So I'll be right back. You can interact with chat, though. Have okay. fun with them. Amuse my audience for me. That's my cat. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. I would pick him up and show him, but he'll start being hyper. I can anyway. I'm going to introduce you guys to my cat. His name is Frisk. Frisk, the people want to see you. I recently bought a, um, one of those like cameras that you can connect to your smartphone. Um, and I put it in my living room so that I could spy on him and see what he does all day. And I have had it for two days now, and I'm a little bit heartbroken to know that all he does all day is sit at the top of his cat perch, looking out the window, waiting for me to get home. But yes, he is an intent cat. And he um, likes to block my screens so that I can't see anything. I'm sorry, I woke up from a nap. Okay, you you have to leave now. Do I talk about games with my kids at school? Um, yes, sometimes. Um, when they, a lot of them, you know, say that they like to play video games, and I ask them, "What do you play?" And most of the time, it's Roblox. Um, Fortnite is on the way out. Minecraft is still popular. You must be talking they, about what the kids like, as I've heard you say, yeah, Roblox, Minecraft, and yeah, Fortnite. Yeah. Um, but they're always impressed that I can name any single Pokemon that they show me. There you, go. Like, you know Pokemon? It's like, kid, I was a Pokemon fan before, like, decades before you were born. I can still do that with, like, the first generation, maybe the second one. But after that, there's, there's, I probably have a lot of gaps anymore. Aw. Hi, kitty. They wanted to see Frisk. This is a dog show. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. I'll allow it. All right. You ready to jump back into it? Yes. All right, and we are back. Why don't we uh, go over this this topic that we have here, which is about the Splatfests. Uh, so Team Grub still is recovering from that horrible <laughs> loss that we suffered a couple of weeks ago. But let's look forward to, you know, the next Splatfest. So we'll be here before we know it. Uh, it, it I, I always like wondering what it's going to be. We have these new three-way Splatfests. And I was wondering, what would it be if we were in charge of that? So, uh, Rebecca, you must have thought about this. If you could do your own three-way Splatfest, what would your ideas be? Okay, so I came up with lots and lots of ideas, but I'm sure you probably don't have time for me to go into all of them. 
But I was thinking about how they usually do one for, like, certain seasons. Like, I know they normally do, like, a Halloween-type theme Mm. every year. And so I was trying to think of what it could be for this one. And I was going with hot drinks. So pumpkin spice, apple cider, or hot chocolate. Okay, that's actually not bad. What team would you be on? I... As much as I love coffee, I'm not a big pumpkin spice fan, so I might go with apple cider. That's interesting. So I'm like famously uh, borderline afraid of apples. So that would be my last choice. Yeah, oh. uh, but I'm also not big. Ch- I don't have much of a sweet tooth. I'm like weird. I'm like boring. I would like I would want like a cinnamon tea or something, which isn't even a choice. I think with those, though, I would actually I would actually go with the pumpkin spice coffee. Given those, I'll be I'll be the basic white girl. I can also say some more of my ideas if you want. I would love to hear them. You could just shoot them off if you want. Can I? Yeah. Well, I know the one that like ever. This is not an original idea, but they need to do one in November for the three Pokemon starters. Freakazito, yeah. Coco, and Quaxley. Like that is the best cross marketing that they can do. And I would be Team Sprigatito for him. Which one's the duck again? Quaxley. Yeah, I think. Yeah, actually. <laughs> Did I actually just ask which one's the duck and the one is fucking called Quaxley? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, Quaxley. I, I think also I... saw a lot of people talking about the three Triforce pieces, Courage, Wisdom, oh, Power. That would be so I good. I would be Wisdom for Zelda. I would be Power because I'm so strong. I like it. I would not be Courage. I don't think I'm very courageous or have much Maybe wisdom. Either. I thought of... Which decade either do you prefer or like, you know, I don't know, whatever. 80s, 90s or 2000s that would incorporate like, I think probably most of who's playing Splatoon. It would, (laughs) but like, okay, maybe I'm being awful. Like they are going to get people sending in like the picture things and they are going to have awful 9-11 jokes. They just are. They just are. (laughs) <laughs> we might have to go oh, no. 70s, 80s, 90s, even though nobody was born then. We just might have to skip one. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, then how about this? Past, present, or future? Oh, I like which that. Would you rather, which would you rather live in or go to or be in? Yeah, I kind of like that. That's actually kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, what foods do you prefer? Sweet, spicy, or salty? Oh, put me on salty. Uh, I have no sweet tooth. I like spicy food. I can't eat spicy food that much anymore it upsets my crone sadly so i can't get too spicy these days just despite me going on and on about spicy bubbles i know but uh i would do yeah i would do spicy or salty yeah i'm a big 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 salty guy so that's a good one though i'd actually would really like that what time of day do you prefer morning afternoon or night oh mikey's a night boy i would do night yeah i thrive at night these are all very good man mine is so stupid compared to these I have two more. I want to hear um, it. I'm being bit by my cat. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, which uh, meal do you prefer? Breakfast, lunch, or dinner? Okay. That's good. That's very good. I am not a brekkie guy. I don't, oh, I'm I, a big breakfast person. A huge breakfast fan. No, nah, I like to eat a granola bar for, for, for breakfast. and I like mm. lunches because it breaks up the work day. So I like that about it. Dinner is probably where I have my best meal, though, I guess. Okay, that's fair. No, I, I love every breakfast food. I love pancakes, waffles, French toast, cereal, yogurt, uh, eggs. I love it all. Um, And then the last one, what weather do you prefer? Sunny, rainy, or snowy? Ooh, I feel like yours are already much better than the weird desert island one we just got, by the way. Listen, I put a lot of thought into Jeez. this. Jeez. <laughs> I feel like you sh- this should actually just be your job is coming up with the splat <laughs> fest. <laughs> like, geez, these are all very good. Man. Thank you. Uh, you know, it's funny because, like, I always, in my heart, I want to say snowy. And then as soon as it's snowy, I'm like, God, I wish it was sunny. And when it's sunny out, I don't necessarily wish it was snowy. You know what I mean? So I'm not I like a- the snow if I can stay inside. If I have to drive in it or go yes. out anywhere, I'm not I'm not a fan anymore. No, that's true. If I yeah, exactly. If I was like somewhere safe then and I then had to go somewhere, I do like, love in a, snow. In a snowy mountain lodge. Like, yes. I'm a big I'm a big Christmas Christmas vibes guy, so anything that gives me that, uh, I'm all about. But that's the problem. Like like December snow is immaculate to me. It's like magical. It like just seeing it makes me cry. And then as soon as it's January snow, I am so over it. I'm like, yeah, get, get the hell out of true. here. 
I don't want to see yeah. you anymore. Uh, mine is so dumb. They won't ever do it. I just want them to ask people which Indiana Jones movie they like more. <laughs> I, because I actually don't know. I always think. What? It, anyways, not not the fourth one, which is bad. But like the first three, my favorite Indiana Jones movie, uh, Raiders Lost Ark, Temple of Doom, or Oscar Strait. My favorite one is just always the one I saw last. Whichever one, I'm like, man, that one's really good. That's my favorite <laughs> one. And then I'll see okay. a different one. I was like, actually, that's my favorite one. You know, it's not out of the question because they do sometimes have promotional spot fests. Like they, they did, did the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles spot fest. Oh my god, they did that one? They did a SpongeBob spot fest. And they're there's gonna they're gonna have a new Indiana Jones movie, and they're gonna look for promotional <gasps> things. And th- Disney's Whoa. already been working with. We saw a bunch of Disney stuff at the Nintendo Direct, uh, or you know, and, and some other things. So, uh, yeah, uh, it could happen. Man, maybe not the direct. I saw something recently where they had a bunch of Disney things. See, it could happen. Now, that would be incredible uh, Splatoon art because people would be doing like the Kali Ma cover your heart. Like, <laughs> let's put the inklings ripping out the squid arts. That'd be great, actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, somebody did. You know, they're actually um, do. It's not, a, you know, they're not directly naming it. But the Salmon Run prizes are references to Back to the Future Part 2. I saw this. So I just that? saw people were talking yeah. about this today. Uh, I need to show. So I love uh, Back to the Future. My younger brother, Chris, really likes Back to the Future. I need to show him this because I've been trying to get him to play Salmon Run. And I've been uns- unsuccessful. This will do it. He will absolutely mm-hmm. play it now. The Marty McFly hat and then the Doc, like, chrome sunglasses. Yes. Oh, I need them. I yeah. need them. Yes. Oh, I do. I do actually really, really like uh, mm-hmm. Back to the Future. Let's see what our community has come up with this one. Um uh, <laughs> Benji Glaskey wrote something childish and then crossed it out. I think embarrassed because we had a guest. Uh, we need I'm, to know. All right, he he wanted it to be dick ass or personality. <laughs> what do you think about that, <laughs> Rebecca? Ass, definitely ass, definitely. Oh, uh, sorry, Mario. <laughs> Uh, he said, uh, uh, so instead, since he's not doing the childish one, we instead are a console war now with Nintendo, Microsoft, Sony is the true spot. Would wouldn't that just be unhinged if Nintendo yes. without context, like, well, which color do you like more red, blue or green? <laughs> That's, good. That's really good. That would be fantastic. And red just happens to be my favorite color. So I would <laughs> oh. pick that one anyway. <laughs> Screaming Man says, what else would, uh, should it be? Three-way spot fest to determine the best meat of the turducken. Boom. Turkey, duck, or chicken. What side are you on? I mean, come on. It's chicken. Like, turkey is great for holidays because it's like this big, it's this big serving. You can feed a ton of people with it. And it's like pretty and it's fun. You cook it all day. It smells good. But like, generally, I'd rather just eat chicken. Duck is too fancy. I- I've tried that. It's like the- kind of greasy, too. Yeah, I've had like a couple times, like even at like nice restaurants, and I'm like, oh, I guess yeah, it's not Go bad. Ahead. But yeah, you know what's weird about duck is that it's like almost like red meat. It's kind of beefy in a weird way. That it, like, I know that sounds good, but it's kind of off putting to have like bird meat taste like that. I'm not a big fan. Chicken is like very versatile. Like I feel like there's way more things you can do. With oh yeah, chicken. like it, it's prepared in a number of different ways than than the other two. Yeah, I like that's my thing. Is I just buy a bunch of like boneless, skinless chicken thighs now, and I just put them all at the grill, and then I have like I slice them. I just have slices of chicken thigh. That I can just put in whatever. It's great. Doctor Suss says the three greatest handheld food items should go head to head: burger, hot dog, and tacos. Go team. Burger. This is that's interesting. Burger, hot dog, and taco. What? Which one would you pick? Um, I would. I would probably pick hot dog. If it's like a good ballpark hot dog, and I was just at a baseball game uh, this weekend, and it was Dollar Dog Night, so we I had yeah. a lot of hot dogs, and they are good. If I uh, if they I get, different at a baseball. Yeah. If I can get like the best burger though, like a really good smash burger, probably burger. Uh, Jane says, bring back Spongebob and Patrick, but now a Squidward, although there may they be a bias. They need to do that because, like, all of us jaded adults would pick Squidward, oh. and it would be amazing. I would 1 million percent pick Squidward. It would not even be a, it wouldn't even be a question. Uh, mm-hmm. Fluffy Cloud Gamer says, might be too easy of an answer, but Neapolitan ice cream best flavor, vanilla, chocolate, or strawberry. That's kind of fun. Would uh, anybody pick strawberry, though? No, I don't like strawberry. Uh, 
it's funny because I, I think even, I, I don't like chocolate that much anymore. But when it comes to, like these flavors, I would still pick chocolate for ice cream. Uh, like vanilla is fine. I don't know why. I would pick vanilla. I actually like it's weird because I don't like chocolate flavored things except like ice cream. It's good. I love vanilla flavored desserts, but I don't really want vanilla ice cream. Maybe it's just the marketing, right? Because we call things vanilla. It's like this bad thing, even though vanilla is actually very flavorful, right? Uh, so that's interesting. Uh, one up versus CPU says battle the first three letters of the alphabet. A versus B versus C. <laughs> well, they all have fun corresponding naughty words. So that's good. Um, I don't know. What's your favorite letter? <laughs> I love the I love how completely uh, trivial this is. B B, uh, B is best. So I agree. Mister Bohr says it's a question that no one has the answer to, and it's time we settle it once and for all in a Splatfest. Which is the most recognizable character? Mickey Mouse, Sonic the Hedgehog, or Tommy Pickles? Oh, uh, this is going to some Pickles. deep. This is going into some deep. Uh, Gay mess and giant bomb lore, Rebecca. So I'll excuse you for that. But yes, uh, uh, God, if Tommy Pickles won that, I think I think I would actually like I would pray for the earth to be flat just so I could jump off it. Winnie, <laughs> I I didn't think that just for just for it to be funny, <laughs> just for the memes. Winnie says planes, trains, and automobiles. God, that'd be a good one for November. That would be a good one. That would be such a good one. I that's such a funny movie. Uh I love when I can watch that on on Thanksgiving. Uh, gosh, that's interesting. I do like trains. Trains are trains. very cozy when I can be on one. I wish I did it more often. Trains Bert? because they're the most environmentally friendly mode of transportation of those three. I wish I was being that thoughtful, but I just like the way they feel. Birthday Bob says, uh, just <laughs> fuck, marry, and kill. <laughs> so not like we're not playing that game with things. Those are the options. Uh fuck. I guess if I had to pick one of these things, the other ones sound like too too committal. If I kill a person, like that's something that's like gonna maybe follow me around for. If I marry a person, they have to that's live with me. That's why you're not picking kill because it'll follow you around, not yeah, because like well, it would haunt you and like be horrible to well, that's, do. That's following me around, yeah. Like you know, but also maybe like they'll catch me and stuff. Like you know, I killed Jeff like you know three days ago. People still think he's alive, but I have to keep worrying. They're gonna find out that all these pictures he's posting were made by Dolly, and that the cops are gonna find me. It's scary stuff. <laughs> J Jeremy G says, Doug Bowser, Phil Spencer, or Jim Ryan, screw the console war. We need an executive <laughs> war. Doug Bowser hasn't even done anything. He's he boring. He's boring. For a guy whose name is Bowser, he is boring. Um, Probably Phil Spencer. I got to pick our boy Jim Ryan. <laughs> we're the big, we're number one Jim Ryan fans over here at the Game Mess. Uh, the unbuttered gooch, he's back, just says, you, me, and Dupree, which looks like a romantic comedy I've never seen before. I've never seen it. Um, it's Owen Wilson. <laughs> I will pick you. Velocity Prime says, a month before Tears of the Kingdom is released, Nintendo will do a Zelda-themed Splatfest based around the Triforce and the leads of the franchise. So, okay, this is a little different than yours. The Link slash Courage, Zelda slash Wisdom, and Ganondorf slash Power. They should actually... One million percent just do that sure, one, by the way. Yeah. Like some form of I feel like that one would also get pretty even split teams. I think that's a big problem with some of these spot fests is that like, you know, ice cream, like vanilla, chocolate, strawberry. Everyone's going to be team chocolate or vanilla. Yeah. Like there, there's not going to be as many strawberry. It's not <clears> very <throat> fun when you're on like a very, very, very popular team. You only yeah. get like mirror matches. Um, I would pick Zelda Wisdom. I think... Uh... Hmm. When you couple it with Link, I think I might do Courage. But if it was just about the Trifor, I don't know. I'd have to... Gosh, this is such a tough one. I'd have to give this one deeper thought. I wish that there was, like, the Triforce of Sleeping In or something. One that I can identify <laughs> with more. <laughs> um, <laughs> Lenny, Cool Dick Denver, <laughs> says, AJ, Chris, or Mike Minotti? I'm on Team AJ because I like how confident he is and stuff he is clearly wrong about. Yeah, that's <laughs> great. Yeah, all right. All right. Who, do you, who do you like more, Becca? Me or my brothers? Keeping in mind, only one of us has asked you to guest on a cool podcast. Well, I would have to go with Mike. Wow, very good. That was the right answer. Oh, he says, uh, someone super chatted this in Game of Society, so now my idea is Arby's, McDonald's, or Wendy's. Almost said Burger King, but I didn't because they know what they did. All right, this is a test, Rebecca. Arby's, McDonald's, or Wendy's? 
Arby's. <laughs> With such enthusiasm, too. Good job. That was the right answer. Doc7's Gamer Days says, which failed console most deserved more success? Wii Ooh. U versus Vita versus Dreamcast. Oh, I gotta be big team Dreamcast on this one. I loved my Dreamcast. I was... Maybe the last time I was actually devastated because of video games was when I heard that the Dreamcast was being discontinued. Justice for the Virtual Boy? Justice for, no, there's no justice for the Virtual Boy, I'm afraid. That would actually be good. And that would actually maybe make some sense. Because Could we do three Nintendo ones? Could it be Wii U versus Virtual Boy? Virtual Boy. Versus, versus Game Boy Micro. Game Boy Micro, which Reggie famously slammed in his uh, book or something. Poor, poor Micro. Sesame Oil says sushi, ramen, and tempura. That's I'm not a big sushi guy, but I do like ramen and tempura. I might be team tempura actually on this one. I think I would be too. Yeah, I have good memories of uh when me and Jeff were at the E3 at the last Sony show, and it was the first time they showed off Ghost of Tsushima and some stuff. And they had this big after party with all these areas themed around the video games, and they had a big Ghost of Tsushima themed area outside with one of those like sushi boat things. But they had tempura uh, on them instead, and it was like real good. Oh wow! Yeah, Bench JC says, "Good day, Mike, Miss Naughty, and guests. What team are you on? Seventy dollar remakes, sixty dollar re-releases, being stuck on a single platform. I gotta represent those games that are stuck on a single platform, aka Team Metal Gear Solid Four: Guns of the Patriots." How about you, Rebecca? I don't think I understand the last option. What is, <laughs> what is you know, games that are just stuck, like like uh, Star Fox Zero. It's just stuck on a single wow. place, and it hasn't had any ports or remakes anywhere. Wow. That one, because there's always a way to play the game. There is always a way. Haas says, it should only be used to settle all Nintendo arguments. Best Mario adjacent, Luigi, Wario, or Waluigi. Or next revival, Golden Sun, Wario Land, Pokemon Trading guard game. I mean, the first one obviously is Waluigi. Uh, uh, Wario. I like Wario. The wow. Best. Okay. Well, I guess we're going to have to fight to the death over that. But the revival one, I feel like a lot of our listeners are going to say Golden Sun. I have a lot of people always going on about Golden Sun. I don't have any special affinity for Golden Sun myself. Wario Land games are very good. Those Pokemon trading card games on uh, on Game Boy Color were actually like really dope, and I'd be super excited to get a new one of those. Actually, you already determined that you were the only kid that was playing the game, <laughs> while the rest of us were collecting them. That's right. That's right. That's why I liked it. I was like, I know how to play this game already. Oh my god! And you could I, probably play with the computer, so you didn't need any of your friends to play with. That's you. actually well. No, I had two brothers. So we actually did get to play a bunch. It was great. I had friends that had to live with me. Diogo RP says, keeping in theme with the Nintendo Royals, one splat fat needs, needs to be Peach versus Daisy versus Rosalina. Sorry, Pauline. Yeah. Democratically elected town officials do not have any singer. That would be pretty good. They have the like colors and everything. Which one would you pick? Rosalina. I used to be Team Rosalina until I made a joke about Daisy's uh, ass in a soccer game. And then suddenly, like, like it suddenly became... you were talking about her underwear in this podcast. Yeah, it's a pale thing. I don't like somehow like daisiness has been thrusted upon me. Beef Hammer says Cleveland, Columbus and Cincinnati. Mike, you must speak as the Ohio representative of the world. Oh, I mean, obviously, I'm being a homer here, but Cleveland's great. I love Cleveland. It's relatively nice and small for a city. It's got uh, plenty of great food, a ton of beer. That's nice about it. We got three major sports teams. We got the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, it's, it's right by the lake, so you got some nice views. Uh, I'm a big Cleveland guy. Big Cleveland guy. Have you ever been? Have you ever been to any of the Ohio cities? Um, I have not been. The first, the closest I've been is Pittsburgh because I'm from oh. I'm your neighbor. I'm from Pennsylvania, so I'm trying to think of what the equivalent. Um, I'm actually closer be. to Pittsburgh than I am to Cleveland. I'm like 50 minutes from Pittsburgh in Youngstown. Yeah, I guess the Pennsylvania equivalent would be like Pittsburgh. Philly and Harrisburg. Harrisburg. Eh, Harrisburg. Really Scranton. Scranton. Yeah, <laughs> nobody likes Scranton. Lossian says for the beef and cheddar boys plus, I would say it should be Coca Cola, Diet Coke, and Coke Zero. If Coke Zero didn't win, I'd be furious. By the way, we should all just actually splat like that caramel, like dark, like brown goo. It should all just be the same color and really Hello. confuse people. Hey, look, we're already doing chocolate ice cream. Okay, we can't avoid That's that. True. Gerber says, how about the three Battletoads, Rash, Zitz, and everyone's favorite, 
Hang on. I sure I can remember. Wart, right? Yeah. Rash, zits, and wart. How dare you? It's ra it's rash, zits, and pimple. I remember. <laughs> Battletoads versus Double Dragon, by the way. Actually, like, very good game. Actually, Battletoads versus Double Dragon on the NES is, is actually better than Battletoads on the NES. I think people who don't know just don't know. And they're going to find out someday. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, you'll find out someday, like everybody yeah. else. No, this answer was not edited to be classier after seeing Smutty Jeff wasn't going to be on the show this week. But there's some people, I think, who were embarrassed when they found out there was a guest. There's some people who did it and still made me say awful, awful things. Uh, I can't remember. Uh, I think I liked, uh, I think I like Zitz. Which one was the one with the sunglasses? I think that might actually be Rash. I think I like Rash the most. <laughs> not, a big, for it. not a big Battletoads fan there, Rebecca. Never played it. Yeah, uh, you're not really missing too much. I like beat em ups a lot. They're they're kind of fun, but they're kind of weird. Uh, they're kind of uh, obnoxious sometimes. Octo says Mario, Mickey Mouse, and Ninja. So that way both Mike and Dan and I can feel old as fuck when Ninja wins. Ninja. I like how he specifies. Wait, Ninja like the, the person? He specifies. He specifies. This. That's not a word. Specifies Ninja the streamer guy here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, what were the other? Okay. okay uh, sorry, on. I didn't mean to cut you off. Please tell me no, more about no, how you feel ahead. about Ninja. I'm... Go. Keep, please continue. They sent me a, a ninja graphic novel one time. I did not know what to do with that. I was like, oh, this looks awful. Uh, not nearly as good as my Batman FaZe Clan comic book that I proudly have on display in my bedroom. <laughs> That's a masterpiece. Nintendo Bros says, Jeff, Mike, or Emron? Uh, well, I mean... <laughs> Uh, that's a sore subject. Moving on. Vision 49. Game Boy, Game Boy Color, or Game Boy Advance? Okay. I don't know if I've ever actually asked you this, Rebecca. Is the Game Boy Color a separate, distinct platform from the Game Boy, or is it like an iteration a la the DSi or the, the, the new 3DS? It's, um... It's... An it's an iteration. How dare you? How could you do this to me? I, I invite you it. on here as my guest and you embarrass me in front of everybody. <laughs> the next question from Uncharted Wolf is they should do a classic Nintendo versus PlayStation versus Xbox, but with a twist. Whichever console wins, the other two will be rid to explode. As soon as the announcement comes that PlayStation 1, every Xbox and Nintendo Switch will be decimated instantly as Jim Ryan laughs, sitting on his throne of lies. <laughs> wow. That's... Wow. Dugan says physical, uh, digital, or streaming. It'd be funny if streaming won, especially on Switch. Yeah. Physical. It's, yeah, no, there's, there's going to be the, the cloud version of Splatoon 3 you have to play for that one. My it's, God, stop it. Uh, Turbo Sean says, God, Turbo Sean, can't let it go, dude. Uh, oh, wait, never mind. Well, it kind of is, because he's he's saying a showdown between the three best Metroid games, and he does not have Super there. He does have oh. Zero Mission, Prime, and Dread. I'll still pick Prime. I like I like Metroid Prime a lot. Dread. I really want to like 3D Metroid, like the Prime games. Um, I played the first one and the beginning of the second one, and I get some motion sickness, and mm. the map is terrible. I hate the map in the Prime games. I, I know what you mean. I can, like, kind of, I don't know. I can get, get my way around it. It is a little confusing. That is it. Um, we need a topic for next week, though. And uh, I know I came up with one, and I wrote it down somewhere, and now I can't remember. So we'll come back to that. Right now, we're going to talk about these Super Chats, which we got a few in here. So let's see. Surelink says, supporting the Mike and Becca show, Grub is out. He sure is. Old Taco says, in games, do you prefer combat options with higher damage numbers or more mechanical uses uh okay well these two things don't necessarily necessarily seem to be like independent of each other i do like it is obnoxious when you deal damage to an enemy and it's like you did three hundred thousand, like five thousand and two hundred and twenty one damage like that is not very useful information for me i can't do anything no, but with there that. is something really satisfying about it I, I, i'm a big mmorpg guy so like there's like every, like sometimes it's become such a big problem in those games that they'll do a stat squish where they'll have to like readjust all the math behind mm. the game so that the numbers like come back down again. And then, and then like three expansions later, because like, you know, they're constantly 
the whole point is that you're constantly getting better loot so you can do more damage. Right, right. And it doesn't just like go up a little bit. It like it's it's it you know it, it keeps multiplying by factors. So Rico Romero says, What Mario song would you want to hear on the big screen? I mean, they're uh I mean the most cinematic one is Gusty Garden. Uh as a sicko, I would want to hear Do the Mario from the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Uh that would just that would be absolutely amazing. Do you think that they could have Jump Up Superstar in like uh, the or something? Maybe they're safe. they're gonna save that for like the third one when like the, Pauline is actually a character. But at some point True. they should do Jump Up. Man, Jump Up Superstar is super good. Uh, Infernal Tim says, "Screw Grub, we're here for Frisk." <laughs> Look at that, Frisk fans, Frisk fans. It's hard to say. Leaky Lake it's says, "No, Leaky Creaky Legs." I almost said Leaky Craig's. Creaky Leg says maybe Chris Pat will just do a Bob Hoskins Mario. I mean, he laughs. I would actually like that. I actually I actually don't hate that Mario movie, Rebecca. I don't know if that's a controversial opinion. I find something about it almost uh, endearing. Uh, maybe I'm just disgusting. I mean, have you ever even seen it? No, I've seen a lot of the Super Mario Super Show, but I haven't seen the Mario movie yet. You should watch it sometime. It is a trip. I want to. I know. It is I would abs- love to. And it's not like, it's obviously, it's like bad in the sense that like, what have they, this is weird. This is not what I would have expected. But it's not like, it's not, it's maybe conceived poorly, but it's not executed poorly, if that makes any sense. And maybe it doesn't. Uh, cre- if you don't go into it expecting a lot of it could be entertaining. It's fun. It's fun. Like, especially now, so removed from it, like, you know, you don't have to get, like, emotionally involved. The Axiom says, what are the chances of the 2D Mario game trailer alongside with the film? Love you guys. It's zero, as Rebecca pointed out. They zero. are they're not talking about a game, sadly. Sadly. Uh, Steven Sullivan says, do you think Yoshi will be in the movie? If so, do you think he'll talk? I sure hope he sounds like how he does in Mario Kart 64. I remember how he, he had a voice in the Super Mario, like, there was a Super Mario cartoon that was, like, the same thing as the Super Show, and he talked in that, and it was kind of weird. He was also, like, yeah. a baby, and Luigi was his, like, adopted father in the cartoon. It was, it was a thing. I think maybe post credit sequence, I think they mostly, if at all, mostly saved for the sequel. He'll be, like, maybe what Tails was. Like, the post credit like sequence... Like tease at the end. Yeah, I mean, it's either gonna be, like, yeah. him or, like, a Wario or something like that, but you probably want it to be, like, a character people really like, and Wario's maybe, like, a weird gross character to a lot of the kids. I bet it could be... It could be even an egg. I, In fact, here's what I bet it is. I bet it's an egg. Wait, I, I have an idea. Go it ahead. starts to crack, and then that's it. Then it goes to black. That's the post credit. Okay. My idea is it hatches all the way, but it's at the top of Peach's Castle. Oh, oh, that'd be so good. It should be at the top. Okay, I'm going to steal your Peach's Castle thing, but I still think it's just going, we're going to like see like a little nest on Peach's Castle or something, and it zooms in, and there's like a Yoshi colored egg with the spots, and it's going to crack. It's going to shake a little and crack, and that's it. That's the hard, like, like that. that's yeah, the I hard butt. That. I could mm. 1 million percent see that. The Axiom, nope, that's the one I just uh, read. Steven Solvin says, Do you think, I also read this one, I'm doing a great job. Toad Pock Shakur. Says, I see Mike finally dropped dead weight grub. Yep, yep, I had enough of his. Just really phoning it in. Just dragging the whole vibe down. The whole show down. We're moving on to a brand new, exciting era. Oh, Inuf- Inufe says, who voices Yoshi? Because it has to be some obnoxious celebrity. They're, they have a voice? Oh, or they're asking us. Yeah, they're asking us to decide I right now. I don't think he talks. I think he goes like, blem, blem. So, like, even, like, let's say Mario 2, like, where he is, like, and you think this, they still won't let him talk? He's a pet. He's his pet dinosaur. He sh- I agree that I don't think I want him to talk. I think I just want him to make those noises and to say Yoshi. Although, I actually liked it, like, when he did just actually make noises. Like, he wasn't even. Blam. 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 You know, as a kid, I liked Yoshi's story. I didn't know that we were supposed to think it wasn't as good as, like, Yoshi's oh Island. Oh, my God. And I, I, yeah, I have the same exact experience with the Yoshi story where I I was all about it as a kid. And then I tried to get to play it as an adult, and it was terrible. Yeah. And I, I, I did, too. I was like, I thought this was the greatest thing. And now all I can see is how dumbed down this is compared to Yoshi's Island. And I get it. 
Ice has so much fun like unlocking the black and white Yoshis and like and like taking mm-hmm. them to the end. I don't know. Uh someone says Tom Howland for Yoshi, and that's not bad. Although I think I actually want Tom Hiddleston for Yoshi. I think that'll be even better. All right. I did remember, by remember, I mean finally looked up the question for next week's show for everybody is what we talked about this a little bit earlier. What uh Nintendo property should be next to get the movie treatment with Nintendo Pictures? So I want to hear everybody's ideas on that. It could be what you think can actually happen, what you would like to happen, and knowing a lot of you, some kind of a weird joke based off of this idea. And you could all have fun with that. Rebecca, have you been playing any Nintendo games lately? I am hopelessly hyper fixated on Splatoon 3, probably until Pokemon Scarlet Violet come out. Um, but more specifically, I have been hyper fixated on table turf battles within the game. Oh, I haven't even have, played have those you tried yet. tried that out yet? No, no, no. Is this the card game? Yeah. I want to, because I'm a big fan of card games inside of games like Fi- Final yeah. Fantasy, which apparently you don't know much about. They, they do this a <laughs> lot, and it's great. It's less of a card game and more of, like, top-down Tetris. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Yes, well, although there was 3D Tetris, which was like an old game that actually was top down Tetris, but I know what you mean. I haven't played it yet, but I did get that impression from it. It looks like it looks a lot of fun, but what do you get when you do it? Do you like get any rewards? Is it just like you play it for the heck of it? Yeah, um, every time you rank up, you can get like um, like titles or banners or uh, like locker stickers and things like that. Um, it's like very small prizes, but it's just a lot of fun to, um, play. I, I need to try that. I, I like Splatoon 3 a lot. I haven't played enough of like that. I haven't even touched single player mode because I've been so into Xenoblade Chronicles 3 a lot more than I thought I would be. So I really want to beat that now, but it's like this 80 hour game and I'm getting close to 40 hours into it. So I still have a long way to go there. And then, yeah, Pokemon's going to come out. Uh, I really want to play Trails from Zero, which is like another long JRPG, Bayonetta. It's funny how everybody was like, wow, there's not much coming out to the Switch this holiday. I am more crammed with stuff I want to play on my Switch this holiday than like almost any other holiday season I can really remember since at least like the Mario Odyssey one. Uh, um, but uh, other than that, I actually I talked about this a little bit, but I beat Beautiful Joe on my GameCube and that made me feel very, very good and very, very happy. It's not an easy game. I'm not saying that I'm a hero and I deserve praise, but I kind of do because it was it was it was a tough time. But again, that was just one that's been on the the to do list for a long time. And it felt good finally getting that one accomplished. Uh, It's definitely it's definitely a good one on the GameCube. There's a beautiful Joe, too, that I might have to get to. But the next thing for me is definitely going to be Eternal Darkness on the GameCube. Have you ever played the beautiful Joe games at all, Rebecca? No, and I feel like my knowledge of them is pretty limited. I don't, I don't know a whole they're, lot about them. They're kind of like two D beat 'em ups with like, like, like fast forward and rewind mechanics, and they're very, they're like cel shaded and like, like kind of based on like Japanese like Sentai superhero kind of a thing. Uh, you know, so a bit like Ultraman esque. It's it's really fun. Mm-hmm. It's 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 just kind of unique in a lot of ways. It, it's it's good stuff. It's Capcom. Back when, like, mm-hmm. Capcom hardly missed. Although, by this time, they missed a bit more. Like, Capcom's peak is probably 8-bit, 16-bit. It's best then. But it's very good. Man, uh, I think that's almost it. You know what I need to do now? As I need to start playing uh, the outro music, if you can believe it. We, we did it. Oh, uh, we yeah, did it. We got through this whole thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Jeff has the freaking cruising Blast song. Uh, Rebecca, can you tell everybody one more time where they can find you online? Yes, you can find me on Twitter and Twitch mostly at Forest Minish. Um, I write for Twinfinite. I stream on Twitch. I do a podcast, uh, the, the Nintendo Shack podcast. Um, it's a lot of fun. Um, tweet at me with your video game opinions, and I, I will enjoy reading them. Thank you so much, Rebecca, for doing this with me. I really appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, it was a little scary. I didn't know if I could get this thing going without Jeff, but here we are. We did it. Yay! Yay. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. I'm going to be back on Thursday uh, with actually my brother, AJ Minotti. He's going to be doing uh, a game as the size with me Thursday. So we are still going full steam ahead without Jeff. It's going to be fine. I am very excited to watch those giant bomb streams tomorrow. They're going to be up to weird stuff. All right, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye.